Good day to everyone. This is Dr. Ferdinand Pien from University of Makati and today we're going to be having a special video lecture on one of the most um, important and at the same time um, a very tasking um, course requirement for students in college and even in uh, in the graduates program sa mga nagma-masteral or nagma-doctoral. Binatawag pong case study no? or case analysis. Okay? So, in today's video, ang mag-uusapan po natin is ano ba yung case study at saka papaano po ba ginagawa no? yung isang case study. So, dito po yung format pag-uusapan natin. Okay? By the way, uh, to, before we proceed to anything else, I'd like to acknowledge and um, acknowledge and at the same time give uh, give thanks to uh, the author of the book that I used as a reference in this particular video lecture. Um, si Dr. Antonio Errol B. Ibanez Jr. at ang kanyang um, a book na may title na Applied Strategic Management and Business Policy. So, dito sa kanya ko po nakuha yung mga informasyon at detalye ng buong video, video lecture nito. Though, meron din ako mga idinagdag ng mga references from the online. No? Pero karamihan po ng mga informasyon na ibabahagi ko sa inyo was taken from this particular book. So, mamaya po sa dulo ng ating uh, mga slides, ipakita po natin yung actual book na ginamit po natin no, for this presentation para somehow kayo po ay uh, ma-inspire na, na uh, mag-subscribe no, or bumili siguro ng book niya kasi maganda po talaga yung book ni Dr. Uh, Ibanez. Okay po. Uh, let us define first what is a case analysis. So, a case, analysis, a case study analysis requires you to investigate a business problem, examine the alternative solutions, and propose the most effective solution using supporting evidence. So, this particular information was taken from writing center uagc.edu. Um, so, pag sinabi po natin case analysis or case study, um, isa, pong, uh, isa po itong activity or project no, or course requirement na normally hinihingi sa mga students um, by way of um, immersing themselves into a actual and real life situation faced or encountered before by an organization or by a company. So dito po uh, babasahin nila yung isang mahabang case uh, case study no? um, normally maabot ng mga three to four pages no? to as much as 10, 11, or 12 pages. No? May, mga ganun case, may mga ganun case study na ganun kaaba. So, babasahin nila yun, pag-aaralan nila, iimbisigan nila no? kung ano ba yung mga problema na encounter ng company. And then, from those problems, kailangan nilang mag-come up ng mga alternative solutions and recommendations para somehow ma-solve nila yung problema ng company. Okay? So, para silang mga ano dito, para silang mga uh, mga investigator, no? Or mga detectives. Okay? Trying to solve or trying to find the problem and then solve and provide the solution to the problem. Okay? Your primary purpose then is to apply your critical thinking skills and business expertise to a problem faced by a real company and propose a logical and realistic solution. Information taken from Fred Mayer, Center for Writing 2020. So, dito po, um, parang sa ganitong uri ng practice or academic requirement for students is sinusubukan pong um, pasain no? yung inyong critical thinking skills yung inyong analytic skills which are basically what uh, 21st century skills require no uh, yung mga companies po kasi natin na uh, na po pwedeng mag-hire po sa inyo bilang mga uh, potential employees no? ay ganitong mga uri ng skills ang hinahanap no? so dapat ma-develop po natin yan sa ating mga students no? yung ganyan critical thinking skills logical as logical skills and at the same time yung mga decision making skills so that can be enhanced no, by doing case analysis okay 
So, as I have mentioned, para kayong mga investigador dito, para kayong mga detectives, you are trying to find out what the problem of the company was, no? And then, try to provide solutions and recommendations or proposals no, on how to solve these kinds of problems. Okay? So, dapat um, matuto kayong magbasa, no? matuto kayong mag-analyze, matuto kayong uh, humimay na iba't ibang mga detalye na pwede makapag-contribute sa greater problem ng isang organization. Okay? And uh, from there, uh, susubukan yung mag-develop uh, ng mga solutions para sa mga problems na yan. By the way, ito pong um, pag-come up natin ng mga critical thinking, analytical uh, and logical skills. No? Decision making skills should um should be inspired by the things that you've learned no, from your previous courses, no, from your previous subjects. So, kung kayo po ngayon ay fourth year na, so dapat lahat ng mga napag-aralan nyo from your previous courses ay dapat may apply nyo rito. Kasi po, ang case analysis is not just limited to one particular course or one particular subject. Hindi lang ito tungkol sa marketing management, hindi lang ito tungkol sa, sa economics, hindi lang ito tungkol sa HR, okay, it is normally a combination of almost everything, okay, strategic management in nature, parang ganun yung dating nito eh. So, dapat lahat po ng mga naipon yung mga informasyon, naipon yung mga knowledge and wisdom from your previous courses, dapat magamit from apply siya dito, okay. So, the purpose of case analysis is show your professor that you can think through a real-life business problem or a decision-making process in a logical, professional, ethical, and informed manner. Again, information taken from Fred Mayer's Center for Writing 2020. So, as mentioned no, from that bullet, so dapat mapatunayan niyo po sa ating uh, teacher or professor na yung inyong binasang mga real-life business problems ay dapat niyo pong um, ma apply din sa inyo bilang mga future professionals. Okay, so dapat uh, pakita natin yung inyong uh, galing sa pag uh, decide okay, on what problem uh, did you solve from the case, no? Okay, and ano po yung mga possible solutions na pwede nating i-offer sa company. Okay? Sa subject company po natin. Okay, now this time, let's talk about the uh, template no, or the presentation format that students uh, must use no, in answering a case study. So, uh, the following is a proposed 10-point framework for analyzing a business case. Actually, doon sa original book ni Dr. Ibanez, um, meron siyang 10-point framework, pero meron akong inalis na isa. Okay, tapos uh, pinalitan ko na lang ng case summary. Okay. So, um, so, for this particular uh, revised presentation format, ito na po yung ating mga uh, bahagi. No? Okay. So, one is uh, the case summary um, where we will be uh, making a summary out of the case. No? Kasi masyadong mahaba yung mga case study normally four pages to as long as 10, 11, or 12 pages. So, gagawan po natin siya ng case summary. Later, i-discuss ka naman po yung bawat part. Okay? So, another part of the presentation template is um, yung time context or yung time frame. Another is, or next is yung viewpoint. Next is statement of the problem. Another is yung statement of objectives. Next is areas of consideration and under this, meron tayong iba't ibang mga minor parts pa po, yung internal environment and external environment. And then under internal environment, we have strengths and weaknesses. And then under external environment, we have opportunities and threats. So overall, parang ang i-discuss mo sa areas of consideration is yung tinatawag nating uh, SWOT or SWOT analysis ng no? uh, no subject na company natin. Okay, now 
another the, the other parts of the presentation format or the presentation template or response follows number six is the alternative courses of action okay or also known as ACA and then number seven is analysis of the alternative courses of action and then um, number eight is conclusion under number eight we have the decision matrix and uh, act selection and then for the last part, uh, we have the action plan or the uh, and the recommendation. Okay, so you have to um, remember that uh, this particular template or this particular uh, format must be presented in an orderly fashion. Kailangan uh, sundin po yung pagkakasunod niya, no? With the exception of the case summary. So, in case summary, po pwede nga win siya um, kapag katapos na niya po lahat gawin, no? Okay? Or po pwede rin uh, gawin din sa simula para mas um, para kumbaga na isummarize nyo na, no? At mas madali nyo nang mabibigyan ng, ng, uh, ng sagot yung mga parts ng inyong uh, presentation template. Okay? Pero I would suggest that you do, no? I strongly suggest that you do the uh, the case summary no? at the end of uh, at the end of uh, writing all the parts of this presentation format. Hanggang sa natapos nyo na po sa action plan and recommendation. Okay? Moving on tayo dito sa unang bahagi ng ating uh, presentation template or presentation format. Okay. So, ito po yung tinatawag nating case summary. Though, ito ay dagdag ko na lang pero uh, it's better na meron tayong case summary para mas mabilis pong uh, um, maunawaan no? ng <clears throat> readers nyo po. Okay, ganun din yung inyong mga audience no? kung kanina nyo man ipepresent itong case analysis nyo para uh, at least maging um, uh, mabilis yung pag um, tag nito, pag intindi nila doon sa laman ng inyong case analysis. Okay? So, ano ba yung case summary? After going through the entire case, whether a 3 to 4 page case or a 10 page case, sometimes more than 10 page, uh, no? the analyst is required to prepare a short summary of the case highlighting the most significant events and circumstances of the people and the company. Okay? So, i-highlight lang po natin yung mga pinaka mabibigat na mga pangyayari, no? yung mga events or yung mga uh, importanteng mga situation no, or circumstances ng mga tao within the company or the company itself. The length of the summary depends on the size or yung pages no, nung, nung case na yung ina-analyze. Three to four page uh, case might need a one page summary. Okay? Kapag uh, tatlong, tatlo hanggang apat na page lang po yung haba ng inyong case, siguro mga isang page ng summary or a little less than one page may be enough to summarize the entire case. Whereas if, uh, whereas if the case is much longer than just four pages, siguro mabot ng 10, 11, or 12 uh, pages, kaya naman siguro isummarize yan by one and a half page na long para at least medyo mas comprehensive yung pagsasummarize mo kasi mahaba talaga yung case, eh, no? I mean 10, 11, or 12 pages. So, um, kailangan more than one page po yung gagamitin nyo to summarize that particular case. A summary must not be a copy-paste you know, from the case itself, but rather the writing or the writing of the analyst themselves. So, ito po yung karniwang uh, um, mistakes na ginagawa ng mga students no? um, in writing a summary, no? okay. whether a case, whether a marketing plan or a business plan summary, no? ang ginagawa nila is um, kinakapipaste nila. So, mas maganda po kung yung inyong case summary is more on the writing of yourselves. No? Kung maga yung, I mean, writing coming from your own understanding of what the case is all about. Okay? Um, pwede kayong dumampot ng ilang mga sentences or statements from the case, but you have to do it, uh, but you have to write it on your own. Okay, kayo po yung mismong nagsusulat nung magiging laman ng summary at hindi lang basta-basta 
kinuha or dinampot no, at kinapi and paste doon sa, uh, sa bahaging ito ng ating uh, case presentation. Okay? So, after the case summary, we have the time context. Time context informs when the problem was noted and this necessitates decision or an action. Generally, it delineates a takeoff point of the analysis. Okay, so pag sinabi po natin uh, time context, parang dito po mababanggit or ma-highlight kung ano yung panahon, kung ano yung exact nung petsya, kung kailan nangyari yung problema. Okay? And um, dito po magiging tinatawag na take-off point ng analysis, meaning kasi dito po makikita kung ano yung mga problema uh, na encounter ng company Okay, paano nangyari yung problema, no? Okay? At syempre, diyan na po magsisimula yung ating uh, critical thinking analysis, no? Para mabigyan natin ng mas magandang solusyon or uh, or uh, recommendation, no? Yung uh, problema ang kinaharap ng company. <clears throat> On the basis of this date or period, foregoing facts of the case are being assessed and analyzed. Specify the time frame if the, if the case is explicit about it. Otherwise, it is safe to assume that the problem has to be solved at the present or current time. Now, once na-identify na po natin yung time or yung period kung kailan nangyari yung problema, then we can now start the assessment and analyzing. Okay, kung bakit nagkaroon ng problema, kung ano-ano yung mga nag-contribute, kung bakit nangyari yung problema, ano yung mga causes, ano yung mga symptoms, etc. Et and then, we also have to be uh, specific no? in terms of identifying the uh, the time frame okay or the time context dapat mabanggit po natin yung exactong petsa and then of course yung description hindi lang po basta basta paglagay ng petsa ha kailangan may description then as to why you think this was the particular time or time frame kung kailan nangyari yung problema dapat may one or two sentence description explaining why you think that this is the time frame okay or the time context now if in case hindi po um <coughs> explicit yung or malinaw yung pagkakabanggit ng mga petsa it is safe to assume that the problem occurred in the present or in the current time okay so parang understandable or ang understanding would be baka yung time context is the actual or the present time. Okay? Which you have to find, by the way, no? kasi ang dami pong mga babanggiting mga petsa dyan sa buong case. Eh. Okay? Pero kailangan ma-identify nyo rin kung alin doon yung pinaka-current time. Okay? So that's another thing that you need to investigate. No? Ano ba yung pinaka-current time? Okay? So that's what we call the time context. The next part of our uh, presentation template for case analysis is the viewpoint. In solving the case, the student or the analyst must specify whose point of view he has taken. Viewpoint should be taken from a person who ultimately decide and act on the predicament. Okay? So, pag sanabi po natin viewpoint is um, um, sino po ba? No? We have to identify kung sino po yung taong um, uh, iniisip natin no, as the person who will be uh, uh, involved no, in, uh, in finding the solution to a problem. Parang as if we are going to put ourselves in the shoes of that particular person. Kaya nga sabi dyan, no? uh, viewpoint should be taken from a person who can ultimately decide and act on the predicament. So parang tayo po yung lalabas na papalit doon sa role ng tao. Kung tayo po yung taong yun, na po yung mga uh, hakbang na gagawin natin para masolve yung problem. Okay? So that's the viewpoint. In other words, he has the authority over a specific area of concern. Example, if the strategic if the problem is strategic in nature, then the officer strategic on strategic level should be considered. Also, to be consistent, if the problem identified is marketing, then the most logical choice should be the marketing head. Okay? So, uh, kung yung viewpoint po o yung tao po na ating uh, 
uh, naiisip na magiging authority to uh, solve that particular concern. No? Um, siya po yung kinukonsiderant viewpoint. Kung ang kanyang posisyon sa kumpanya ay may kinalaman sa uh, on a strategic level, then it should be the person that is um, uh, sitting in in the uh, board or maybe in the management committee. No? So, kasi medyo mataas yung, medyo significant yung level ng, o yung nature ng problem na kailangan i-address. Okay? Kung uh, pang marketing naman po, yung issues o yung problems na iniisip nyong magiging, naging problema ng kumpanya, then someone from the marketing department should be considered as uh, the viewpoint. Okay? So, um, now to help you out in making a decision as to who will be your viewpoints, let us take a look at these following uh, management decision levels. Okay, for policy level, we have the chair or the board of directors, the CEO or the COO. No? Okay, pwede rin sigurong mancom or management committee kasi sila po yung mga matataas na mga, uh, mga uh, position sa isang kumpanya. Okay? Kapag ka project level naman, mga division heads, pwede siguro yung marketing head, o kaya yung chief marketing officer, yung pwede gano'n. No? So, kung HR, gano'n din, no? division head, no? H, di, uh, division head for human resource. No? So, kung sa tingin nyo, sa ganong level yung problema, well, pwede nyo siya yung piliin nyo. Okay? Project level po ang tawag dyan. For program level, managers or junior executives po ang pwede natin uh, kunin. Siguro mga branch manager, mga product manager, brand manager, so on and so forth. Okay? Uh, for tasks and activity level, mga supervisors or mga heads po yung pwede natin piliin as our viewpoint. Okay? Kung medyo mababa lang po yung level ng problem na na-encounter ng isang company. Okay? Moving on. So, let's talk about the next uh, part of the presentation template, which is the statement of the problem. Uh, proper identification of the problem is often one of the most difficult steps in a case analysis. Every case analysis requires identification of the main problem that requires a solution or a course of action. Okay? Kapag sinabi po nating statement of the problem, ito normally yung dapat nating ma-identify as the main source of the problem of the organization. Okay? And um, sadly, no, ito po yung isa sa mga pinakamahirap ma-identify no, in a case analysis. Kasi nga, uh, everything boils down to finding uh, the problem. Okay? But finding the problem is not that easy. No? So medyo mahirap po siya. Okay? In fact, every case analysis requires the identification of the main problem that requires a solution or a course of action. Okay? So given yan, parang nabangit ko na from the previous slides that um, um, one way to uh, solve the problem is to identify the, the, the main problem first. Okay? And once identified na po natin yung main problem, we have to think of uh, the solution or course of action to solve that particular problem. Now, if I may share something that uh, Albert Einstein once said, no? okay. if uh, he was to solve a problem, though, he would normally spend about 50 or 55 minutes in think, thinking what the problem is first, and then maybe 10 to 5 minutes to think of what the solution may be. No? So, parang dun pa lang po coming from uh, uh, Albert Einstein himself. Kung kailangan kong magbigay ng solusyon sa isang problema. Well, I have to think of the problem most of the time. Kailangan maalaman ko muna kung ano yung problema. Because it's hard to find a solution to a problem without identifying the problem first. Imagine yourself as a doctor, no? a physician, no? medical practitioner ka, isa kang doktor. Meron kang pasyente yung dumating. Meron siyang sakit, meron siyang sisigaling lagnat. Okay? You can't just give a prescription or yung magre-reseta ka agad ng gamot sa kanya without even studying kung ano yung status ng inyong pasyente. Okay? Kasi yung uh, lagnat might just be a manifestation of a particular 
ailment or disease na kanyang uh, nai-experience. No? Okay. Uh, mamaya kung, anong, kung ano yung nai-reseta mo na hindi naman pala magiging uh, gamot or solution sa kanyang problema. So, kailangan natin dumaan siya sa isang sa series of assessments. No? Pwedeng physical assessment, okay, kung hindi talaga ma-determine no? kung ano yung uh, ano yung sakit niya, okay? Um, Q&A may all, may all, may help the physician or doctor in solving the case. No? Meaning ng Q&A sa tanong-tanungin natin yung pasyente kung ano yung mga nararamdaman niya, okay? And from there maybe he can judge what uh, the, the disease or the ailment may be and then prescribe a a uh, medicine no? to to uh, to treat the disease not to treat the ailment pero um normally hindi lang ganoon kababaw yung ginagawa ng mga doctor they would normally require a laboratory a series of laboratory tests no urine analysis uh cbc no and uh, many other things no? even x-ray might be required okay para lang malaman kung ano ba talaga yung uh, na-experience sa sakit ng ating pasyente. Okay? So, parang ganun din po yung uh, sa paghanap natin ng problem in a case analysis. Okay? Medyo matrabaho, medyo madugo po yung paghanap natin ng problema. Because uh, in a case sometimes, lalo na kung medyo mahaba yung case study natin, umabot ng 10 pages or more, you will be uh, introduced to different kinds of problems. Madaming mga problema yung mga mababanggit. No? So, from there, kailangan mo munang ma-assess kung alin talaga yung pinakamabigat na problema which might lead to uh, uh, to the other problems. No? So, dapat ganun kabusisi yung pagtingin natin. Unfortunately, business cases do not arrive with the label problem. Ergo, the student must learn to identify the problem raised. Okay, hindi nyo, hindi nyo problema normally in a case study, hindi binabanggit yung term na problem. Okay, kasi kayo po talaga yung dapat na mag-isip kung ano yung mga um, makahanap, no? Or makakita ng mismong problema ng company. Okay, hindi po, um, hindi po, uh, Tag nito, outright na binabanggit from the case na ito yung problem. Okay? So, talagang parang nakahide siya, parang nakasilhouette siya. And from there, kailangan hanapin ng mga analysts or ng mga students what exactly was the problem for this company. Essentially, <clears throat> in solving a case, one has to acknowledge that a problem exists and to determine what the problem actually is. Afterwards, proceed to the process. Proceed to the process of making a decision. Okay, so kailangan na may didihan po natin na dapat uh, maor ma acknowledge at may didihan po natin na dapat uh, ang nasa isip natin is may problema yung company pero ano ba yung problema kina nila? Okay, and uh, then kapag na gawa na natin yun or na identify na natin yung problem, then we can now proceed to the other parts of the the case or the case study. Next is determining the accurate problem will establish the decision to be made. Hence, the problem identification is the input stage and the start of the decision-making process. Okay. Parang lamalabas input stage daw yung problem identification simply because that will dictate everything. No? Yung mga susunod na mga aksyon nyo is naka um, naka naka-ankla or naka-anchor doon sa problem na nahanap nyo. Okay? Everything else will be dictated by the problem identified. Okay? All actions that you will be made will be dictated by the problem you identified no? in the case. Okay? So, let's start the next part. Oh, more about statement of the problem pa rin. Uh, just, now since this is one of the most significant uh, parts of the case study, well, it needs to be discussed thoroughly. No? So, para mas maging malinaw din para sa inyo po kung bakit po um, <clears throat> ganun na lang importante yung paghahanap natin doon sa problema within the case. Okay. So, to further discuss this particular part, uh, this is followed by the problem description and analysis. So, once we identified the 
statement of the problem or the problem of uh, within the case, it should be given a product description and the analysis. Okay, dapat magbigyan po natin ng, ng, uh, ng description and ng paliwanag. Bakit ito po yung naisip nating um, problema ng ating company? Okay, the problem is the paramount concern than its solution, which may be merely the application of the strategies applied by some of the companies with similar concern. May bigat ng statement na yun, ha? You know why? Kasi um, uh, when we say solution may be merely the application of strategies, so parang uh, it's like saying na the strategies must be uh, the strategies or the solutions that the analyst will provide is somehow um, academic, no? parang elementary na lang for for the uh, for the uh, the analysts now for the students to uh, to find out the actual solution to a problem. No? Pero mas parang mas mabigat po na task is yung paghahanap muna doon sa problema. Okay? Kailangan ma-identify muna natin yung problem. And once we solidified that this particular problem is really the problem for the case, then <clears throat> solutions may might be easier to uh, to provide no? or strategies may be easier to provide knowing that of course, you as a students um, <clears throat> learn um, learn from your previous course already, no? So, yung mga strategies na na-aral nyo o natutunan nyo from your previous courses, dito nyo na po i-apply, okay? So, basically, the most important thing is really to identify the main problem first, okay? Gaya nga nung ating <coughs> pinamit na example kanina with a physician, no? parang mahirap sa kanya makapagbigay ng prescription or ng solution doon sa problem ng pasyente kung hindi niya eksaktong alam kung ano yung mismo sakit ng pasyente. Okay? So, ganun din yung ginamit ko nga statement from Albert Einstein no? na kapag ka meron daw siyang problemang uh, uh, meron daw siyang problemang may encounter um, he spends about 50 or 55 minutes thinking about what the problem really is and then maybe 5 to 10 minutes to think of the solution <clears throat> so that's that's how he uh, he divides his time no, in solving a particular problem so dun pa lang marirealize nyo my god mas mahirap pa lang identify yung tunay na problema bago natin makuha yung solution okay so what is a problem a problem is an area of concern or a difficult and perplexing um, finding symptoms and cause situation in a business hindering or threatening the growth or attainment of the company's objectives so when we say a problem is a push area of concern okay isang bagay na nagpapahirap sa kumpanya okay isang bagay na nagpapahirap sa sitwasyon ng kumpanya na, na nagiging dahilan ng kanilang hindi pag-unlad, no? Nagiging dahilan ng kanila, hindi pag-accomplish ng kanilang mga stated objectives. So, nagiging hadlang sa kanilang pag-angat or nagiging hadlang sa kanilang paglago. Okay? Nagiging hadlang sa kanilang um, um, magandang takbo ng kanilang operations. No? So, yun po yung mga kinukonsider na problem. A problem exists when a difference between the current state and a more desirable state is perceived. Okay, nangyayari daw yung problema kapag uh, meron silang mga bagay na gustong accomplish, mga gustong ma-achieve, okay, pero may mga bagay somewhere in that particular area na, na nakakapagbigay ng distraction, no? okay? Distraction, hindi distraction. Distraction, okay? Yung pagkaantala, no? okay, <clears throat> ng kanilang trabaho and therefore hindi nila ma-achieve yung kanilang uh, desirable state. Okay, which is their um, goal or objective. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, in identifying a problem, you have to consider the two uh, main <coughs> main um, culprits. No? Okay, in in uh, in citing a particular problem. No? Um, dito magiging perplexing or dito medyo magiging 
confusing yung situation kasi bukod sa problem, meron pa tayong ginatawag na symptoms and causes. Now, ano ba yung symptoms? Symptoms are events, circumstances, and conditions that manifest the existence of a problem. Okay? Mga events or mga circumstances na po pwede, o mga kondisyon na po pwedeng maka, uh, makapagbigay ng manifestation doon sa isang problema ang nag-exist. Okay? Na po pwede rin maging dahilan kung uh, po pwede rin maging uh, maging tawag na to, maging uh, perplexing on your end kasi niisip nyo na ito pala, ito yung mga problema pero hindi nyo alam, ito, na, it, ito lang yung mga resulta ng naging problema. Okay? But there is something more uh, more um, harmful no? or more severe and more significant than just the symptoms. Okay? Kasi manifestation lang yung symptoms ng actual problem. But they are not the the main problem itself. Okay? They guide the search for the underlying cause of the problem. Okay. Now, uh, speaking of guiding, no? so, uh, pero pag nakita, ang maganda naman sa symptoms, is pag nakita niyo yung mga symptoms, at least, may tuturo niya kayo <clears throat> na hanapin yung actual na problema. Okay? Now, let's talk about the cause or the causes. Causes are unwanted changes or events which bring about a result and therefore must be identified, investigated, solved, and eliminated. Okay? So, aside from the symptoms, uh, meron din tayo mga cause. Okay? So, these are mga unwanted circumstances or mga, uh, mga unwanted uh, events and, and uh, changes in the operations of the company that brought undesirable results, okay? Then therefore, must be identified kaya kailangan madapat, kaya kailangan mahanap or makita nila, imbisigahan kung bakit nangyari yun, and hahanapan ng solusyon, no? Or eliminate as much as possible. Okay? So, ito yung mga causes. Now, it's important that you find the causes first, okay? Which, uh, which uh, might contributed to uh, the greater problem of the organization or of the company. Okay. Now, as to um, as to now, which one should be addressed first? I think you should address the uh, it is paramount that you should address the causes, no? because it contributes to the greater problem of the organization. Okay. So once na lang, nakita nakita niyo po yung mga causes which led to the bigger problem. Okay, uh, you are on target of solving that particular case. Okay. <clears throat> now the next part is once we once we're done with identifying the problem, we now we will now be moving on to the next part of the presentation format, which is the statement of the objectives. Okay. So <clears throat> now that we've identified the problem, we will now be citing our objectives no? uh, in basically solving or uh, coming up with a solution to the problem. The objectives of the analysis is the goal in which the case hopes to achieve. These are steps or accomplishments that company desires to be given a specific period of time in the future. So ito po yung mga bagay na dapat po nating um, i site no or or, or ilista or isulat para uh, i-accomplish ng ating company and in in doing so in accomplishing these objectives will contribute to the uh, solution um, uh, solution or elimination of the problem identified previously okay so objectives are specifications by which alternative courses of action are to be developed here you have to consider yung smart na tinatawag. I'm sure you know what smart is. Uh, yung specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. So, i-apply po natin yan dito sa ating pagsulat ng objectives. Okay? So, objectives are merely considered as alternative courses of action then. Pero, ang difference lang ng statement of, of objectives sa alternative courses of action is mas detalyado po sa 
ATA, no? so, alter so alternative courses of action. Whereas dito sa statement of objectives is just a one-liner lang ito, mga one sentence, no? sentence or phrase nga lang. No? So, parang ito pong mga examples na nakasulat dito sa baba. Most common objectives are as follows, no? to, to re-establish previous conditions, to improve the current level of performance, to create conditions never before realized. Okay, these are just some of the <clears throat> um, the examples, but at the same time, parang guide lang. No? Okay, hindi po siya talaga yung actual na smart na objective. Kasi kailangan dyan, may time bound. Eh, no? Kailangan dyan, specific. So, it must be um, <clears throat> expressed in numbers or in figures. No? Um, kapag ka naghahanap ako ng object, kapag ka nagpapagawa ako ng objective sa mga students ko, I would want to include numbers no, and figures like 25%, no, 10%. Um, kung monetary, let's say 1 million, 10 million, mga ganyan. No? Or kung, kung sizes, no? kung bilang, let's say mga 1,000 units, no? 10,000 units, 10,000 pieces, yung mga ganyan. Para mas specific talaga siya and maging measurable. Because these three, no, as guide no, or as samples no, in writing your objective, these are not specific and measurable. Okay? And how can you attain this without any specific numbers that you would include? Okay? So, of course, you have to be time-bound on. So, meaning, dapat naka-specify din dyan kung anong panahon or anong pedge yan dapat ma-accomplish yung mga objectives na yan. Okay? So, lagyan po natin ng mind frame. Like, for example, one month, two months, no? Uh, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, last quarter of the year, okay, etc., etc. Okay, so dapat may pecha o may panahon kung kailan siya dapat ma-accomplish. Kasi yun po yung mag-set ng boundary, okay, or parang timeline or deadline for this to be accomplished. Kasi kung ang objective natin cannot be accomplished in a, certain, in a particular time, parang it's useless to set an objective, right? For example, <clears throat> you're a student and you, and you wanted to graduate. No? Pero hindi ka naman nag-set ng timeline kung kailan ka gagraduate. So, ibig sabihin, kahit 40 years old ka na, uh, okay lang na pagdating mo ng 40 anos, doon ka lang gagraduate. Diba? So, dapat bigyan mo ng time frame. I need to graduate in college uh, in in four years time. No? Sa apat na taon, dapat makagraduate na. O ngayon, kung medyo talagang medyo may problema ka when it comes to your schedule, no? When it comes to your finances, five years might be acceptable, no? Okay, siguro kung di ko matapos ng apat taon, I'm gonna give myself five years, okay? Sa loob ng limang taon, dapat tapos ko na siya. Okay, so in five years time, nakagraduate ka. So, accomplish yung, yung objective, okay? Kasi nagbigay ka rin ng time frame. A good objective should be able to reduce the uncertainty regarding the action and realize the desired outcome. Yun po yung ibig sabihin ng mga binanggit ko kanina. No? Yung pagiging specific, pagiging measurable, and pagiging pagkakaroon ng time bound. Because that would be, uh, that would reduce uncertainty regarding the action. No? Meaning ng uncertainty, medyo naging malinaw sa you. Eh, no? hindi, hindi, hindi ka naging uncertain. Naging malinaw kasi kompleto, meron siyang specific siya, measurable siya at may time bound siya. No? So, hindi naging uncertain. Naging certain ka kung anong mga action kailangan gawin. Okay? That is linking the objective to the big picture, the corporate mission or the strategic plan. So, ito rin, isa rin itong dapat na matinding consideration na gawin ng mga analyst natin. Yung pag-connect po ng inyong mga smart objectives sa corporate mission and strategic plan ng organization. Dapat laging, laging i-consider yun. Okay? Tingnan din natin yung, yung uh, uh, corporate vision ng company. No? Kasi mamaya medyo lihis tayo sa uh, pinaka-overall mission and overall uh, vision ng company. So dapat uh, we, we need to be, we need to stay online. Okay? In line pala. We need to stay in line with the corporate mission and the corporate vision of the company. Okay? Para lahat po ng ating, ating uh, uh, action ay within the bounds no, of the 
uh, corporate policies of the organization. <clears throat> okay, so yun po yung tinatawag nating statement of objectives.